Hello and welcome to the Scholar Progenium. Today I'm going to be talking about three big tips for new recruits in Bolt Action. How new players can up their game. So first off, I just want to say this is by no means going to be a comprehensive list, nor am I going to go into excruciating detail on any single one of these tips, although given the chance, I could happily go on for hours about any single one of these topics. No more, I want to give you guys some big ideas, some things that have opened my eyes over the time I've been playing Bolt Action. You see, I just love the game of Bolt Action. I love playing it against my mates. I love playing friendly matches, I love playing narrative matches, and I love playing at events, whether they're themed events or super competitive. And there's been so many moments across so many games where, you know, someone's done something or taught me a tip or a trick or something like that, and it's really been like, oh, wow, okay, that changes things a little bit. So I just want to sort of the top three that come to mind um, off the top of my head But with that being said, I can very much see this being the first in a much larger series where I, you know, obviously there's endless tips. I could give a thousand and one tips for new players. So first off, if you're a newer player watching this video, make sure you comment down below with any sort of questions or ideas that you have about bolt action as you're getting into it, because it's almost been so long for me, it's hard to put myself in the shoes of a new player, but um, I could do another video where I answer all of those questions, which would be cool. And if you're a veteran player, I'd love it if you could take the time out of your day um, to drop a comment down below and give me the number one thing you would want to say to new players. Not only so they can read that, but so that I can do a video of sort of your top tips, the community's top tips for uh, new players for Bolt Action, which I think would be a really, really cool and helpful and useful uh, and probably quite fun and funny video to produce. So I'd love it if you could uh, drop me a comment down below. That'd be awesome. So without much further ado, let's get into the meat and potatoes with the first tip I have. And the first big idea, the first meta concept is that combat wins games. And that's why I've got these Gurkhas out here for you now. There's a reason why Gurkhas have a reputation. You can't get into the game for more than a month and not come across some kind of post or someone mentioning or running Gurkhas. And there's a reason why they're the most, you know, a feared unit. It's because they're the most powerful combat unit in the game. Not only Gurkhas, but you've got, you know, your Maori Gurkhas, you've got your Para Gurkhas, you've got your Gurkha Gurkhas, all of the Gurkhas. And the thing that makes them powerful is they're the most effective combat units in the game. And that, in many ways, makes them the most effective infantry in the game. So let's explore that idea a little more now. So we're going to come at this from two angles. Killing units and also taking objectives. And the two are very much intertwined. So first off... Let's look at killing units. So if you want to make sure a unit is dead, really the only way to finish it in one go is to kill it in close combat. There is ways to shoot them to death, but essentially that's the reason why units such as the Stuart or this Italian tank that bring 20 plus LMG, MMG shots, 20 plus DACA shots, they can do enough damage to an infantry unit to kill half the models force a leadership check and force it to run off the board. But even these guys are really, really unlikely. It's almost impossible for them to wipe a unit out that's fresh in one blast. It's It would be almost unheard of unless it was a very small sort of five-man inexperienced squad or something like that. So you're not really going to wipe out units in shooting. Instead, if you need a unit dead... You're going to have to kill it in close combat. And a lot of the time, you do need to get units dead. Now, that comes brings on to the objective side of things. So if I pull out the rule book here, and we can see that we've got the 12 battle scenarios. So if you're a new player, 
more than likely you just play in the scenarios in the book and I have actually spoken to people who only really play the first couple, the battle scenarios, but you're really missing out um, on the depth of bolt action. You know, get stuck in, try them all out. I couldn't recommend more than anything if you get in, into bolt action with a friend or a group of friends, play th th through them all in order. Don't even randomize it. Just start at scenario one, and work your way through to 12. But in these scenarios, a decent chunk of them require you to clear the objectives of all units within three inches of them and because units can go down uh, and if they're in hard cover and they can go down it's almost impossible to dig them out with shooting and you know those kinds of objectives key positions is one of them uh, manhunt obviously you've got to kill the officer in close combat point defense and hold until relieved and um, so a good 25 percent of the missions require you to clear all enemy units from within three inches of one or more objectives the only real way to make sure that they're going to be dead uh, and just properly dead and in quick enough time because often you've got to get across the board to get to the objectives so uh, <laughs> after that time's played out you're not going to have the time to blast them away you're going to have to kill them in close combat. You're gonna to have to fix bayonets, that's the way to do it. And if you haven't uh, gritted your teeth and got into your first close combat yet, I highly recommend you familiarizing yourself with those rules and starting you know, poking holes in people with those bayonets because that is how you are gonna win games. And let's go over to the gaming table for a second now so I can show you this in action. So let me propose a scenario to you. Here we have a British Tommy squad of regulars facing off against some Italian regulars. And for the sake of argument, let's say that the Italians hold this objective and the Brits need to take it off them. And for the sake of argument, we'll say that if the Brits take this particular objective, they're going to be a winning in a winning position in the game that they're playing. And the Italian player knows this and the Brit player knows it also. Now, in this case, the Brit player uh, could fight out with the Italian player here. But the Italian player has got some hard cover. And let's say... This objective, this particular squad, he's got other things fighting. He doesn't need this squad in the game. He can just go down. That means even if the Brits are point blank range, they're going to be hitting on sixes. And let's say they've advanced up to this wall. So the first round of shooting is going to be, even though they're in point blank range, on sixes, followed by sixes. Because you start on a three, point blank takes you to a two, but then hard cover, three, four down five six and moved is sixes followed by sixes so i'll just roll one burst of fire here and we'll see how far the brits get in that situation well we'll fire with our lmg first four shots needing sixes followed by sixes and no no chances there whatsoever we then got a loader and we've got four guys with rifles so i'll blast those rifles off and yet again absolutely zero chances there Got a little unlucky there on eight dice, you know, by the odds, you would ideally get one six. Let's say I got that six. Am I going to get a hit? No. Let's say I got really lucky, one in 36 chance, and I had rolled a six followed by six. Now I need to roll a kill, and oh, look, just straight up, it's a two on a 50-50. I haven't killed anyone, even putting the odds in my favor there on that first round of fire. But, you know... We've made it six four by sixes. Let's say they're already locked, they've already made their way up there and they're hitting on sixes. Well, but we'll do the same conditions again. We'll pretend no one's pinned or anything like that just to make it super easy. So that LMG is going to put a burst of fire in. We're at point blank range here. But again, the Italian player thinks, no, I'm just going to go down again. I don't want the Brits to take this objective off me. And again, we've had no hits there with the LMG and with the rifle. Oh, we've got lucky there. We've got a couple of hits. And we have, in fact, got a kill. And with that kill, we've killed one of the six members of the squad. Unfortunately, with that rate of fire, it's going to take us six turns to wipe out this squad of infantry. So, the, in this situation, to take this objective, realistically, if you've got an opponent in hardcover with a squad of regular infantry dug in, they can hold that objective from firepower. 
what are your options? So, of course, the other option is getting into close combat. Now, we've got six regulars versus six regulars here. And if we were to charge over this obstacle in this situation um, and they're dug into it, we're going to be fighting at the same time time and that means we're on dead even odds that puts us in no better situation in fact we could get unlucky we could lose it's 50 50 basically and in that case um we're no close to taking the objective and in fact we've lost a unit and that's why this is one of those big ideas you need to be aware that when you're playing your games of bolt action when you're building your lists that you have combat effective units in there so there's a couple of ways we can approach this. So of course, if it's just a straight fight between two squads of evenly matched infantry, you're going to need to uneven those odds and bring in some fire support. So let's say we build our list and we take into account the fact and when we're setting up, when we're building our units, that these units are gonna be operating together. Let's say I roll my Bren carrier, just nine inches either over the wall because you can do, or around the wall, and I give these Italians a, a good old burst of double LMG fire from the Brits. So then of course the Brits charge the Italians, fix bayonets lads, we're fighting at the same time, we've got three kills there, the Italians they get four dice back and they only get the one, that Italian unit gets wiped out in one fell swoop and you can consolidate as you wish around the cover as the objective depending on the situation. Another way to beef up your units for close combat is to upgrade them to Veteran. Although Veteran is rather expensive at 13 points a model, I really cannot recommend it enough as uh, regardless of the rest of the units in your army, having a couple of Veterans just to rely on um, at least one to do the heavy lifting when you need to fight close combats is really, really going to help. So this time we've got an even match. We've got six versus six. We've not had that fire support, but instead the veterans are looking after themselves. And there's going to be a significant difference here in close combat ability because you don't roll to hit in close combat, of course, you only roll to wound, which makes it quite the uneven fight. So even if they're fighting at the same time, we'll have six attacks from the veterans and we've got one, two, three, four kills there. So that'll be four Italians wiped out. The Italian regulars strike back. They've also got their six attacks. We're fighting into a dug-in position, so we're fighting at the same time. And they have managed to kill three there, which is a very, very lucky roll there. One kill above average. But even with that, it is four to three. We've both rolled slightly lucky, and we have won the, the duel there, and we take that objective once again. Now, another way we can get the odds in our favour is, of course, with SMGs. But I would give you a top tip here, which is one SMG probably isn't going to make all the difference. Even fighting against regulars, you're only 50-50 going to kill with the model, with the tough fighter. Which means that, you know, half the time, you're not even going to get another dice. And even if you get another dice, it's only 50-50 whether it's going to come off. But let's say we have three SMGs here in this squad. Um, you, with Soviets, for example, you can run full SMG wielding regular squads. So the, you know this is the perfect example for you guys. So let's try that combat out now. So with our three tough fighters, we do get two kills, and then we get one more. So that makes that three in total. And as you can see, I, you know with three dice, I had to get a little lucky, and I still only managed to get one through three SMGs. Absolute minimum, really, you'd be wanting four if you're going for a loaded out close combat squad that's relying on SMGs for their close combat ability. Of course, we've got that three other rifles, and we get one more kill, making it four kills in total. The Italians, they get their six back, and they get two kills. Again, we wipe out the squad and take the objective. Now, as you can imagine, there's so much more to this. I could go on about close combat tips for days and days, but realistically, the big picture takeaway is that your units need to be able to take objectives off the opponent and they need to be tooled up to fight. Not every unit in particular, but every army needs a couple of combat capable units that can do that job. Okay, so finally, let's combine that all together. I'm gonna to take a seven man veteran squad here with three SMGs. I'm gonna put them up against an eight man 
regular Italian squad fighting at the same time. So they're outnumbered and they're not fighting in the ideal situation. Obviously, you'd rather attack units that are in the open, but we're talking about say, taking objectives here. So we'll go with our three SMGs first. And we've only got one kill on the tough... Will we get a tough fighter? No. So we've got one kill so far. And we've got four more rifles. And we get two more. That makes it three. Italians fight back. They've got eight attacks here. So the veterans have got really unlucky. But I'm not actually that worried. Because these Italians have to roll five. They have to beat three to wipe the veterans out. They have to get four kills. So they've only got two kills there. Two sixes. Even if they'd got another one. We'd be fighting out another round of combat. And this time... It would be five veterans. So let's say they had got three there, just for the sake of argument. But the towns, the Brits have already won it against the odds because they're veterans with a couple of SMGs. But let's say that they lost three each there. You know, first round of combat, they didn't clear them. It's only four versus five now. But as you can see, the veterans, you know, that actually is better odds than they were facing already proportionally. We keep our SMGs, we pick what we lose. We go for two, we go, we get two kills. We get two extra fights for that tough fighter. We get an extra kill. That's three. Squad essentially wiped out at this point. We're going to roll our rifle. We don't get anything with him. The Italians have five dice now. And they've got to get three kills on five ups with five dice. As you can see, it's probably not going to happen. Let's see if they get lucky. No, in fact, they just do the Italian thing. They bail out of there. They see the writing on the wall. And... Uh, yeah, that's the objective taken. So we can see all of those ideas combining together. That's why you need some combat available squads. And I've not used the British national rules there. That could make it even worse. Um, I've just guaranteed the charge and pretended I've got up and at them. But if you're a British player in particular, you can see that there's a lot of rules, such as tough as boots, which can um, really up the ante in your close combat units. So next up... Let's talk about big guns. Now, this can take the form of light howitzers all the way up to super heavy anti-tank guns such as the 17 pounder. And of course, we can find these as field guns or mounted onto armored vehicles such as the super heavy anti-tank gun on the Panther here or the heavy anti-tank gun on the Joseph Stalin II over here. Now again, I could wax lyrical about this topic for ages, how to get the most out of your big guns. But the headline I want to give you today is maybe one of those unsung tips that doesn't come off very often. But that is that half range kind of is max range with these guns. You always want to be playing them within the half range. And that is because on anti-tank weapons, um, they get a minus one to pen over half range and that particularly comes into play when you're dealing with smaller light anti-tank weapons such as this Stuart here although you know light anti-tank weapons are very prevalent but they're only going to pen on a three up over half range but that's not even the big deal the big deal is just how less likely you are to hit in that situation more often than not it's much better to find another target shoot at something else now that won't always apply if you're locked in a tank duel and you happen to shoot shots at each other until one of you dies then of course you've got to focus on that tank duel unless you can again bring other units in maybe hit that tank in the side with a little armored car or a humber something like that pull out of the tank duel but if you can if you're not in a duel or something like that if your tank's life isn't on the line then don't shoot the unit you necessarily want to. Shoot the unit that you're more likely to hit. Shoot the unit that often is within half range. If your unit, if your opponent's all in cover, then the unit that closer is the unit that you're more likely to hit. Even if it's not the most important unit for you at that moment, even if it's not the scariest unit, more often than not, you know, I'm more than happy to even pop open an armored car, a Bren carrier, a truck even, with the big gun on this bad boy, just getting that dice out of the bag again. As I've said, I could go on forever about this. There's so many sort of tendrils to this tip that go off into other areas of the game. But really, 
just have that mentality that you're wanting to fight in close range you're wanting to position within half range just to overall increase the chance of getting those hits in and also playing to make sure that you're not within close range of your opponent's weapons if your opponent's got a field gun you don't have to worry about entirely exposing tank oh, i can't dare to show my tank around that little bit of bush no instead you can probably get away with that as long as you're over his half range he's already on a man's tit if you can stick to a little bit of soft cover over half range he's hitting you on fives it's no you know not likely to happen you're relatively safe operating at those distances so it's not only a tip for getting into close range so you can get the kills on but it's also about what you can get away with how far can you push the boundaries and you know you've got to be able to take and hold ground so just keeping an eye on those ranges and thinking right am i out of half range right i can probably pull this off so the final point I want to make on this is that if you're you know, struggling, let's say you're just getting into bolt action, you've got yourself a medium tank and you're thinking, oh, this tank does nothing. Well, first things first, you know, you're somewhat right. Medium tanks are expensive for what they can do on the table, but you're probably also just getting into close range, half range of your opponent's anti-tank weapons whilst also often firing shots from over half range from your own weapons that in itself that sort of 17 percent switch on both sides can be the big difference between a tank operating well and a tank not so if you're really struggling to get your tanks working that could well be the issue you have final thing i want to talk about is momentum and dice in the bag now this is not just about list building but also about gameplay strategy and tactics. So you can get away with having lower dice in the bag. I have won tournaments where I've taken a 10 dice list and beaten three 13 dice opponents in a row. It was capped at 13. I wouldn't have done that in an uncapped event because 10 dice versus like 18 is never going to work. But you can get away with kind of maybe a three dice difference for the first couple of turns of the game but as with all things there's a time to reap and there's a time to sow and what i mean by this is there's a time to play to the objectives and there's a time to play to the initiative and dice game so if you want to take an elite lower unit list then you can totally do that and you can definitely make it work but what you're going to have to remember is your first focus in every game you're, you play is evening the odds there. And when building lists and going for elite lists, it's often a mistake from new players that they have solid units in that list. They've got like three, four, five veteran units. But to sort of cut the fat, trim the fat on that, they also have some cheaper units in there. But those cheaper units are what are what making your veteran units not work. It's what's losing your games. Because your opponent, their cracks in your armor, your opponent can kill those dice off as quickly as your elite units can kill off any of their units. So you're never getting ahead of the curve. You're on the back foot the whole game, and that means you're on the back foot to finish the game with a win on the objectives or with kill points. However, if you want to take an elite list then or you know you've got a real idea in mind then you have to make sure that if you've got vulnerable units you're not letting your opponent take them off you and ideally you're build you're committing you're building a list that's extremely tough if you've got fire teams you have to pay the tax for veteran just so that they can't just kill off that piat on a four on a lucky four up they have to work for it they have to put enough dice onto that team um to get through small team to get through enough hits and then to get through veteran and kill them off so you know that that can be sort of one of the perspectives when you're looking at momentum the other one is just in general you're looking to take those easy dice off the opponent you're looking to you know even if you've got if you start with a dice advantage it's the same thing you don't always start focused on the objectives you start by trying to get the upper hand in the game and secure that lead and then go on to seize the objectives and 
this momentum thing continues throughout the game. It's not just to start the game, right, mid-game, let's play to the objectives. If you're behind, if you, you're in the losing side of things and you've got opponent you you've got opponents units that are you know really really putting pressure on you've got a big block of eight veterans with SMGs over there. You've got blooming flamethrower over there, da, 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 da. and they're all really hard units to crack and they're coming at you. But your opponent has other vulnerable units, units that have suffered on the assault, units this, that and the other your officers just strayed a little too close. Then the way to pump the brakes in the game and to get back in the action and sort of pull out of a guaranteed loss and you can go and watch my battle reports i've got loads of battle reports out there where the person behind managed to pull it back and win the game or draw the game or whatever and the way you do that is instead of panicking and trying to finish off the units that are really putting pressure on you you sort of take into account right how many dice can they realistically take off me that turn do i need to retreat with that sniper just stop them killing him off with an assault and in return what easy dice has he left around what are vulnerable and if you can take one turn around turn four and just even the odds you know get a couple of dice off them they can't get a couple of dice off you you're going into that next turn turn five on an even footing and then you can start focusing on okay how do i actually win this game because you're never going to do that if your opponent's got you on the back foot in terms of the initiative and they've got you on the back foot in terms of the objectives, it's that's a losing battle. And you can't win on the objectives when you're not getting the dice draws that you need. So it's just the way to resolve that situation is by fixing the momentum, fixing the amount of dice in the bag. And sort of that's your target priority, not necessarily the scariest or most deadly unit in front of you. So I've got one final bonus tip for you guys, actually. And it seems like a very simple, straightforward one. But just make sure that you read the rules. Now, it seems so obvious, but I can say from experience, I've been guilty of this myself. If I'm picking up a new gaming system, me and my boys, we have a wide taste in games. We game every Friday night like clockwork. We have done for years. We've played Ronin, various historical games. We've played Malifaux, all kinds of stuff. And... With that, you can legitimately pick up a lot of games just from experience, from secondhand knowledge, from playing it every so often for a few weeks or months. And that is absolutely fine when you're playing those games casually with your mates. But really, reading the rules brings such a greater understanding. And it kind of balances the game, if that makes sense. It you, You're going to see why certain units are so good and why certain units aren't that good even though on paper just from scrolling through easy army you know you're picking up a few models you're trying to save that money you've been stung by games workshop buying books that go out of date in the past all of that and you try and get by but really i cannot encourage you guys enough the sooner you can work your way through the rule book bit at a bit bit at a time or however you manage it the sooner you will become a much much better bolt action player as i said i sound silly even saying it but just one of those things guys get yourselves a copy they're 10 a penny easy to get hold of and as you can see i'm a veteran i've been playing bolt action for years i've been playing second edition since you know the month it came out so to speak and mine is a uh, very well thumbed through by now and you know i use it every game that's for sure so there's my three big tips. As I've said, guys, I'm not going into any more detail than that. There's a thousand things I could say. Right now, I'm having to really be strict and restrain myself so I don't waffle on for 500 hours. But as I've said at the start of the video, if you're a new player, hit us up with some questions. If you're a regular or a long-time subscriber or a veteran player, and hit us up with your number one tip. And I'm going to take all of that and I'm going to put it together so we've got even more content in the coming weeks. So with all that being said, I hope you found this video interesting and entertaining. This has been the Scholar Progenium. Thank you very much for your time. Goodbye.